Release the Snyder Cut. Guys, welcome to Myth Machine. Today we're gonna to talk about the Snyder Cut and why it's more than just another superhero movie and how it has the potential to change movie making forever. Let's do it. It's no secret that I've never been the biggest DCEU fan. I'm more of a Marvel guy myself, but I have always enjoyed Zack Snyder's movies. I remember seeing 300 when I was in high school, and I remember just being blown away by the world building and the cinematography that Zack Snyder created in that movie. This is Sparta! I mean, there's no denying that that movie is pretty iconic. As a director, Zack Snyder is known for being highly stylized. The color grade is always a little bit desaturated and just very high contrast. It's almost at times like you're watching a music video. Like the dude is so good at action. He's incorporating slow motion shots with just like fast paced fighting scenes. He really likes to explore kind of the gray areas of characterization. He's never been known for just doing the classic good versus evil. There's always that little, area of unknown in the middle. When Zack Snyder joined the DCEU, he basically had this four to five film Snyderverse planned out that would start with Man of Steel and kind of culminate in this two part giant Justice League movie. So way back in 2013, kind of on the heels of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, Zack kicked off his vision with Man of Steel. Love it or hate it, Man of Steel had one of the best trailers I've ever seen to this day. Just the great Hans Zimmer score, those like iconic shots, a young Clark Kent running around the farm with a red blanket tied around his neck, pretending to be the superhero, basically foreshadowing what he would become. Ugh, goosebumps, man. Man of Steel was definitely a more grounded, gritty take on Superman, way different than what we had been used to in the previous Christopher Reeve movies, or even the majority of the comics or you know animated series for that matter. The Clark Kent slash Superman that Zack Snyder was giving us was this multi-dimensional character. He wasn't just the Boy Scout, the do-gooder that we were used to seeing all the time. He really had this inner conflict. It was more like a immigrant story, right? This alien who comes to this planet, he's an outcast, he's got these powers he doesn't understand. It was kind of a coming of age story that was really cool. He's got these two different different fathers, one from Earth, one from Krypton, and he's basically learning from both of them throughout the film on how to become a man, how to become a good human being and to use his powers for good. It really was a more realistic take on what it would be like to be an all-powerful being living among normal humans. You know, with great power comes great responsibility thing, but Cool. Man of Steel got a lot of hate because it really was a lot more bloody and violent. I mean, there are like 10 minute long fight scenes of just buildings getting destroyed left and right. But besides the gratuitous action, if you look a little bit deeper, it is really just a character study. I personally think he pulled it off. He also reimagined the sillier aspects of the character of Superman. Like he got rid of the red underwear and the S logo wasn't actually an S. It was kind of this weird shape that us as Earthlings, we saw it as an S, but what it really stood for was, on my world, it means hope. And Zack followed Man of Steel up in 2016 with Batman v Superman or Dawn of Justice, which was basically a direct sequel to Man of Steel. You could also just call it Man of Steel 2 because Clark Kent still was front and center of that film while also bringing in Bruce Wayne. I remember when this film came out, I was super skeptical of seeing Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne and Batman. But man, the guy knocked it out of the park. He just took it in a whole different direction. We'd been used to seeing actors in their mid thirties playing Bruce Wayne, just like super buff, you know, kind of in their prime. But Ben Affleck took this older, grittier, you know, he's seen some stuff in his lifetime and he's a little bit grizzled and kind of jaded. And people always make fun of Batman's voice, you know, the, I'm Batman. I thought that he did something pretty interesting here, kind of reimagining that and having it be his helmet that kind of amplifies his voice and lowers it so that people don't know who he is. I don't know, maybe it's not from the source material, exactly, but it's creative, it's new. And in a world full of superhero movies, we could use some fresh takes. The original cut of BVS was closer to four hours, but the studio started meddling and they were like, hey, you gotta cut this down. So Zach cut the film down to roughly two hours. And frankly, there were some plot holes. There were some silly things, but then he released an ultimate cut or a director's cut. And this cut was about three hours long. Now, if you saw BVS in theaters and you just didn't like it, I would highly, highly recommend the ultimate cut. This three hour cut really does have everything in there that you need to make sense of the story. And it sets up all these plot points and storylines that were supposed to be paid off in the future films that Zack Snyder had planned. When the film came out, it got really mixed reviews. It didn't get the box office numbers that the studio was hoping for. There was just a lot of general negativity around it. And this was during a time when Marvel was absolutely 
crushing the game. I mean, during this time period, Captain America the Winter Soldier came out, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Thor Ragnarok, which is beloved by most fans. And actually, almost all of those films have a pretty strong fan base. So because that was kind of the standard, that was what everyone was looking for when they went into a superhero film. When they went into Batman vs Superman, they were kind of taken aback. They were like, what is this dark, super gritty world? Batman's killing people, Superman's dying. Like it just wasn't really being done at the time. But what I will say is that if you put Batman vs Superman or Man of Steel for that matter, next to any one of those Marvel films, it feels completely different and just has a very singular vision. Now I can already hear the keyboards clicking and I can hear you guys saying, yeah, but it's not the source material. It's not the Batman and Superman that we're used to. Yeah, that's kind of the point. We've already got that and we can continue to get that in the future from other stories, but that's not what this story is. And even though it's not what you wanted and what most people wanted, Zack Snyder was accomplishing his goal 100%. And it was his vision. Marvel is awesome because we're getting all these interconnected stories, but it's like all of these different people's visions culminating together. This was one dude's singular vision. And that rarely happens on big blockbusters, especially superhero films. So right in the middle of this crazy storm that was the Marvel Cinematic Universe's renaissance, Snyder was working on the first part of his two-part Justice League movie. But the studio was looking at the huge success that Marvel was having and then looking at Batman vs Superman and saying, hmm, uh, maybe we should be doing what they're doing. Where DC's movies were gritty and grounded and frankly pretty dark, Marvel was making more funny and lighthearted action-focused adventures. They were making movies that the whole family could go and watch. So in the middle of filming Justice League, the studio came to Snyder and they said, hey, you gotta change all this stuff. You gotta make it more Marvel. So Zack was in the middle of this crazy game of tug of war with the studio trying to fight for his vision. And then his daughter unfortunately died due to suicide. And when that tragedy struck, he obviously had to step away from the project. Now, this is where DC and Warner Brothers really dropped the ball. There's just really no other way to look at it. Instead of giving the director the time that he needed to grieve the loss of his daughter with his family, the executives just said, hey, no, we want our yearly bonus. And so this movie needs to come out on time no matter what. They pulled in Joss Whedon, who's the guy who did the first two Avengers movies and said, hey, take this movie that we've already been working on for years and reshoot 80 to 90% of it and make it a Marvel movie. Oh, guys, it's a DC movie. It shouldn't be a Marvel movie. At the end of the day, the decision was not based on, hey, how can we make the best movie possible? It was, hey, we like money. So Joss came in and they literally rewrote and reshot 80 to 90% of the film, throwing out plot lines and payoffs to story beats that had already been set up by Zack in his previous two films. So when Justice League came out, it was a completely different film and it didn't make sense. They changed the story, they changed the scenery, they changed the villains because Technology, VFX, because we can. <sighs> they even threw out the score that Junkie XL had been working on and replaced it with Danny Elfman. Now, I love Danny Elfman. He's the guy who's done almost all of Tim Burton's movies. He has done the scores for Spider-Man and a ton of other great things. But when you start with two movies with a composer like Hans Zimmer and bring in Junkie XL and they're working jointly on these films, you bring in Danny Elfman, they are just two completely different composer. So the tone was just all over the place. It didn't even feel like a sequel to the last two movies. <sighs> we all know how that ended up. The film came out. It was a financial and critical failure because it sucked. But I mean, how is it not going to? I mean, I, 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 <sighs> money. They just wanted money. So for the next three to four years, fans petitioned to release the Snyder Cut. I mean, I'm sure you saw the hashtag release the Snyder Cut all over the place. It was plastered everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere. It got to the point where Zack Snyder himself was joining the movement. Actors from the film, celebrities of all types were joining the movement. And say what you will about fan toxicity. This was a little bit different because this was actors and a director who had this story that they were signed on to tell that just kind of had it ripped away from them. None of them were happy about it. And whether you were a fan or just a casual moviegoer, nobody walked out of that movie super hyped. The best reviews I ever heard for it were, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, sure. But the crazy thing is all of these fans rallying around this movement actually made it come to pass. The Snyder Cut is now being released on March 18th as a four part series on HBO Max. Each of those four episodes will have a one hour runtime. Now the original theatrical cut that was released of Justice League had about a two, maybe a two and a half hour runtime. 80% of that movie, 
next. We're only getting footage and scenes that were shot by Zack Snyder when he was originally on the project. Now it's been announced that it'll be rated R for violence and some language, which is great because now that means that they're leaning into what DC originally was with this vision. The budget for this is $30 million to shoot scenes that they hadn't finished up when Snyder left. And this budget will also help finish up VFX, the score, editing, you name it. Another interesting fact is it's being presented in an aspect ratio similar to IMAX, meaning that we're going to see more image than the standard letterbox format in most superhero movies. So now that we know what the Snyder Cut is and how it came to pass, here is why the Snyder Cut is so important and how it could change filmmaking forever. First off, this has never happened before. We've never seen a fan movement like this that was actually listened to by the studios. Now, obviously the studio is doing this because they know they can make money, of course, but had the fans not rallied around the director during this tragic time for him, this never would have happened. This basically shows that fans' voices are heard and if you want something and you get a crowd that's loud enough, people are gonna listen. It also shows that even if you don't like Zack Snyder's movies, one, that's totally fine and valid. Movies are subjective, we don't all have to like them. But it shows us that in a world oversaturated with quirky, fun, family adventure films like the MCU, there is also still a demand for those darker, grittier takes on those same types of stories and characters. It shows us that we don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, especially if somebody else is already doing it and frankly doing it better than you are. This also opens up so much potential for the futures of other films that were in similar situations, like Solo, A Star Wars Story, which also had 80% of the film reshot and taken away from the original directors. We're getting extended cuts of films and releasing them on streaming. Like if we could just do that with The Rise of Skywalker, that thing was so fast paced, you could tell that there was so much more that they shot. Movie gods, please. Please, please, please. When directors want to take their time to develop their characters and develop these stories, they can now do it in a longer format through streaming. And then later they could release it as one big film, but they don't have to waste all of the money that it takes to put those into theaters and frankly not get as many show times as they would if it had a shorter runtime. The other thing, and I cannot stress this enough, is that it has brought so much positive awareness to suicide prevention. Bands that have rallied around this cause have raised more than $150,000 to put towards suicide prevention. Now I know that fans can also be very toxic and negative, and there are definitely aspects of that to this, but I think that this is a huge positive takeaway from this specific instance. So once the Snyder Cut is finally released on HBO Max, what does the future hold for the DCEU? Well, that depends on how successful this film actually is. But if this movie makes enough money for Warner Bros, we could see the actors and Zack return to finish up the story that they started telling. So whether this version of it is successful or not, or good or bad, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just glad that Zack and the cast will finally get to present to the world the project that they all signed on and agreed to making. This is their vision, and really that's what's important. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are on the Snyder Cut or the DCEU in general. General, hit me up in the comments below. Check out my other video here on the MCU if you're more of an MCU person. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.